Hey, hey, welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander, and today we have kind of a sensitive topic, but something that I think is mandatory for all of us. See, we're literally living with our heads in the sand and in denial if we have not acknowledged that we're living in a very different world than we lived in a year ago. Things have changed. Coming up on one year of the pandemic, the first mandated quarantine we had, so much has affected us. And I have a question that I want us all to think about as we talk today. Question is, have you truly taken some time to think about how you've been affected by the pandemic in the last 12 months? I mean, really set aside some time, even an hour, even a half an hour, to think about how it has actually affected you personally in all areas of your life. Not just business, not just health, not just fear, worry, concern, but your mental health, your ability to make decisions, your uh, planning skills. Maybe you are a super planner. You plan ahead of time. You, you, you know your five-year plan in advance. Well, that this last 12 months has probably thrown your planner completely out the window. You know, just taking some time to really think about how you've been affected. Now, don't hear what I'm not saying here. This is not going to be a long political, you know, super thing that we're talking about today at all. It's really just thinking about personally how this has affected you and how you want to start moving forward. Because there does seem to be a light at the end of the tunnel, but we cannot erase the effects of the last 12 months and it's had on us and our business and our lives and our families and our relationships and our mental well-being. And I think this is things that people don't talk about often enough when it comes to business. We are in business, yes, but it has more to do with just financial sheets and numbers and inventory and uh, sell-through rates and revenue. There's so much more to you and to business than just those tasks. I mean, think about it. A year ago, we could come and go freely. We could hop on a plane and go anywhere. We could get in our cars. We could go to the movies or to an amusement park. We could go to weddings and funerals and birthday parties and graduations. We could hug people without worrying. Are they, am I, could I get them sick? Are they going to get me sick? Just Think about that for just a minute. I'm a hugger, guys, so I think about this often. I find resistance when I want to see somebody that I love and I want to hug them and then I have to stop myself and think, is this appropriate anymore? Are they going to worry? Are they going to pull back? Is this kind of connection lost forever? We could shake hands. If you're not a hugger, maybe you're a handshaker. And now, we don't shake hands. You could grab brunch with friends and sit in a restaurant without seeing signs and empty tables that require proper distance. We could look around the room and see expressions on people's faces. We could see people laughing. We could see people in deep thought. We could visit our elderly loved ones, walk into any building without temperature checks and face coverings. We could see live music and dancing and sporting events and plays and the theater. Just those things alone. We're all experiencing some sort of loss. And I'm not sure that all of us have taken the time. I certainly have been lately taking the time to think about these things, contemplating the loss, even if it returns. There's certain things we can never get back. And it's really okay to process and think, and we should take some time. So whether or not you've taken the time to contemplate these things, they have affected you in powerful ways. And so for many of us, we haven't acknowledged that. We haven't taken the time to really think and grieve or work through 
some of the effects of the emotions of it. Now, I know some of you are introverted. Some of you, my introvert friends are like, yes, let's keep this going. Like no people and no obligations and no reason to try and come up with excuses of why you don't want to attend something in person. Perhaps maybe it's been bliss for you to finally get some peace from always having to be busy with events and meetings and mandatory people obligations. Meanwhile, some of our extroverted friends are literally dying inside, right? There are not enough Zoom meetings that can make up for sitting across the table from somebody and having a real conversation and real connection. Better than nothing on Zoom or FaceTime, but not the same. But whether you're introverted or extroverted, we all have been affected personally, personally and especially in business. Let's just be real here. Let's be real with ourselves. That doing business by yourself is rough. It's tough and hard. It's hard enough just doing business, but doing business when you are alone or feeling isolated or you can't um, meet with other people and have real conversations aside from a couple of social media comments, being an entrepreneur can be extremely lonely. Even if you prefer to be alone, even if you're an introvert and you prefer to have silence and quiet time and time by yourself, it's still tough to do by yourself. Everybody needs somebody to share ideas with, to work through problems with, to connect with someone who understands you. And I don't know about you, but have you ever, the people around you, close friends or family, especially in quarantine or isolation or social distancing, where we're trying to just kind of stay in our own little bubble um, until we know it's safe to get out of it, there's people around us that don't understand our struggles. They've never sold anything online before. They've never been an entrepreneur. They don't understand what it's like to own a business. They don't understand the continuous decisions that you have to make every single day. They don't understand that there's problems to solve at every turn and sometimes absolutely no viable answers that you can see. Your spouse, your children, your, even your close friends, your parents, people around you, they don't always understand why you keep going at this when there's always another mountain to climb. To be heard and understood is literally at the core of our being. It's part of human connection. And honestly, I'll admit I have struggled a lot with this isolation and depression during this pandemic. And y'all, I am not prone to this. I am like the grass is greener, positive, sunshines and rainbows most of the time type of person. But I have had to seriously contemplate and work, contemplate and work through some of these emotions and, and just things that just crept up on me. I didn't realize the heaviness I was feeling, the loss, the struggle of just regular life and connection in general. I had no idea how much I really relied on connecting with people in a real tangible way. I have found that regular meetings and connections with people, specifically with people who really understand what I'm going through, what I, who I am and what I'm doing is the best antidote for my isolation for my feeling of alone. Now, the word isolation comes from the Latin meaning island. And so, although I, when I think of island, I think of like all the islands I've been to, it's like Puerto Rico and Aruba and Jamaica and all the you know, beautiful island places. But thinking about an island that maybe is desolate and desperate for someone to come visit, maybe it is a beautiful island, except for no one's coming, no one's seeing, no one's sharing in that experience with you. An island is a lonely, place if you're on it by yourself. So let's be real. Not everybody around us understands. The people that we're, um, you know, closest to and are hanging out with, whether it's in our houses or just, you know, the close circle that we have that we're trying to keep, you know, distance and things. They don't, they don't, miss, nobody I know owns a business except me. None of them have ever had the type of struggles, had the type of things. So 
it's really tough when I see other friends and family sparingly. The last thing I want to do is break out into full blown Amazon speak and talk about creative blocks and GTI and exemptions and Amazon Seller Central. I mean, <laughs> nobody wants to hear about that. Let's be real. It has made me more aware of specific communities for specific things in my life to make connections. A place to go where my Amazon concerns and complaints are going to be heard and understood. It's not going to be people that don't speak the language. And do you long to be understood or to be heard and supported by people that actually speak the language? Have you been, at, I want you to think about this for a minute. I think we've all been through a situation we can think of where we felt grossly outnumbered. Have you ever felt like you didn't belong somewhere? Maybe you were brand new to a job where everybody knew each other and you were the new kid on the block and you didn't know how to break through into that. You felt shy or awkward or just misunderstood. Perhaps you've moved to a new city and didn't know a single person. Maybe worse. Maybe you've been to a conference or a meeting and you were the only person of your race or your gender or your age in attendance. Talk about isolation. You look around and there's no familiar faces, maybe no foes, maybe no enemies, but definitely no friends. You know the feeling. The feeling that no one understands you, the feeling that no one can relate to you, that isolation feeling. It makes you want to run and hide or scream or cry or jump up and down and be noticed or heard or maybe pretend to be something you're not just to blend in because you're so tired of being the only one. Maybe you want to disappear completely when you feel like this. You know, when I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes, I was super overwhelmed with all the new things that I had to, to learn and know just to stay alive. And the worst thing was there was no one to talk to about it. I mean, my doctor had some pointers. He had plenty of resources for me to read, but that didn't matter. My husband, my mom, my friends, no one was like me. No one even knew what to say or how to support me. I know no one personally that's a T1D. Now, T1D is short for type 1 diabetic. So just so you know, that's a T1D. But that's, it was just me, alone, fighting a battle for my life. No one understood the struggles and my pain and my fear and the needles and the day-to-day self-care of being a T1D. Just the terminology alone could have you stuck on Google for days and days. But then something amazing happened. One conversation with an old friend from church and I found them. It was just like turning onto your street after being gone for two weeks on a vacation. Your home, I found them, my people. My old friend told me about a group for T1Ds and I joined immediately. When I didn't have to explain what it meant when my sensor quit working, when I didn't have to explain that my pen was malfunctioning and no one asked me about the ink in my pen, I knew I had found my people. I didn't have to explain myself at every turn. They just knew what I was talking about. We spoke the same language. We knew each other without even having to explain everything. Do you know this feeling? That feeling of home? That feeling of, ah, oh, these are my people. They understand it. It's like, the moment when you're finally understood, a place where you could go and you could understand their pain and they could understand yours and your struggle and you could support them and you could receive mutual support back. That feeling that you're understood when you mention a problem and you're challenged and there's other people who just get it and they have real suggestions and real life tangible advice for you, you know, your people. It's not that I don't love and support the other people around me, but when it comes to my T1D, they just don't get it. And so joining this group, they understood me without me having to explain all the different things. 
Now, chances are during this pandemic, we have all felt like we've needed to find our people in different areas of our lives. In my T1D group, there are people that understand my type 1 diabetes like no other people because they have it. They walk through it. They walk someone else through it. They know and understand. But in other areas of our lives, we need this kind of understanding and connection too. Have you found your people within your business? You know, those who speak Amazon language, those people that understand what it means to struggle with listing and GTINs and branding issues and seller support and um, compliance documents and bad feedback and all the other things, the language that we speak together. Have you made true connections that help you feel understood and supported? Let's go one step further. Do you have a personal phone number of someone who speaks your language in business that you can call or text when you're facing difficulty or struggle or just ready to pull your hair out? I want you to know that whether you are a beginner or an advanced seller, that you belong and that you are welcomed in the mommy income community. You are welcomed in the Amazon Files community and you have a place where you can come and safely talk about your business and get the help you need and get the support and speak the language. Not just complaining and getting help for that, but also sharing your wins. Y'all, other people don't understand that. Nobody understands more like this group and this community of people. When you create your first listing and it sells out immediately, that is like winning the Super Bowl for your bundles. Like people don't understand that. You say that to a husband or a spouse or a wife or someone else and they look at you with eyes glazed over like, so? Those are not your business people. You got to get with your business people. There is no need to feel isolated and alone in this business. We have a community. In fact, I encourage you to make deeper connections than just joining and lurking in yet another group. I don't care if you're in 5,000 groups. Do you have deep connection? Do you have a phone number? Do you know that's a sacred thing nowadays? Like everybody can be connected on Facebook Messenger or, or Instagram or social media. But it's a whole different thing when you are on a phone number basis with someone. Can I get an amen? If you can text them, you are on a different level of connection. I'm calling you to more. Why? Because after being in this business a long time, a long time, I started my business in 2003. That seems like ages ago. There's one thing I know for sure. It's the rising tide raises all ships. That means when we build each other up and support one another on a real level, we all succeed. When we reach beyond our comfort zone and ask for help or offer it, we all succeed. We are truly better together. Now, here's the deal, though. It doesn't matter how great a group you are in if they don't speak your language. I didn't join an infertility group to get support for my T1D. So if you're a wholesale bundler, if you are in the Amazon space and you are specifically doing wholesale bundlers, you need to connect with others who are walking the same path as you. And it's always better when you have a diverse group of people, both beginners, intermediate, advanced, people that do all different things so that you can help contribute to the collective raising of the ships. It's not just about what I can get, it's what I can give. What can I barter? What can I trade? What can I help someone else do? And what do I get help with? If you are looking for a deeper connection with those who are on the same path as you, I want to invite you to our next virtual workshop. Now, as an extrovert, I know this, there's absolutely nothing that you can do to replace that face-to-face -face connection. And I super long for the day when I can literally hug people, meet you face-to-face, -face, shake your hands, take pictures with you, do all the things that I did before a pandemic. I cannot wait for that day. But I gotta tell you, the future doesn't wait. They don't, the future doesn't care about the pandemic. They don't care whether vaccines are rolling out slowly or quickly. It's happening anyway. Time is passing anyway. 
I don't want you to spend another year in lonely isolation waiting for the pandemic to decide so that you can come back to face-to-face -to -face instruction. We can be hands-on wherever we are. Thank God for technology and being able to be able to do this whenever and wherever we choose. Trust me, I literally have contemplated it. I've contemplated retiring, hanging out in a hole, going somewhere else, doing something else because I've tried to figure out how to grieve the loss of that in-person connection. Before the pandemic, I was busy, busy, busy going, meeting people, meeting clients in person, going to meetups, running meetups, volunteering at different places in the community, constantly doing stuff that involved people because that's how I roll. And it's okay to feel like that's been a loss or just kind of wallow in the fact that we don't know when that's actually going to come back. It's like someone stole a year of our lives that we can never get back. This past year has been rough, period. We have to, the right to feel all those things. But making connections doesn't have to wait until vaccines or the pandemic is lifted or any of those things. If Zoom and FaceTime is the best that we can do, then so be it because real connection is still real connection. It's better than isolation and no connections at all. Our last virtual workshop, we got to know so many of you and we spent the day sharing ideas and building successful bundles remotely, yes. But those that have attended are now forming their own mastermind groups. They're found friends, they found their people, people they could connect to and build bundles together. Is that something that you want or need? I can help you with that. I can help you find the right connection with the right people to help each other raise your business, grow your business together. This kind of intentional connection cannot be underestimated. Those same people could get stuck wondering what to do next, overthinking their next bundle, maybe because they were waiting for the next in-person event. You could be stuck there for how long? Meanwhile, time is passing by and the world is not waiting. The future isn't waiting. Pandemic or no pandemic, the show must go on and the community that we have built with the workshop attendees is absolutely priceless. It's one of the things that has kept me going during these hard times is that I've got a place where people understand the struggles and they're there to offer support and help and I can support and help them as well. It's a community, it's a belonging and an understanding. Now, some of these women who have previously attended these workshops have become really good friends of mine. I've been to their houses, I've met their families, we've worked together, we've shared Zoom happy hours and connected on a deeper level. Why? Because when you work that closely with other people and help them succeed and they help you succeed and breakthroughs happen, we all need that connection and we can't just undo that. We all want to feel like we belong, like we're part of something, like we're understood. And working alongside each other in these workshops gives us that deeper connection than any other, than better than anything any sort of Facebook comment ever will. Have you ever been on a social media group or a Facebook comment or Twitter or something like that and you've just said something and you feel like it just disappears into the oblivion? No one's listening. No one understands. No one cares. There's so many other comments, it really doesn't matter. When you share in the successes and struggles of building businesses together, you are part of something more. You are contributing to the success of others and they are contributing to the success of yours. It's a collective effort. You remember the names, the faces of those people that you've worked with. You remember their stories, their struggles. This kind of work goes beyond a weekend of workshopping. It can be a lifetime of connection. If you've been feeling isolated and alone and stuck in your business, I want you to consider joining us for the next virtual workshop. It's a place you can come and connect and grow. Now, I'm going to be real with you and upfront. This doesn't happen automatically. It doesn't happen just because you show up. Will not get connected to someone and become a valuable member of the group if you are not intentional, if you don't come into it with the intention to 
connect with other people, to make some mutual friends, to be able to say, I am going to contribute to the success of these people and they're going to contribute to the success of me and we can work together. You will not learn simply by osmosis. It takes active participation in any group, in any form, in any workshop, in any anything. Active participation. So when you're ready to join me and many other really, really smart people who desire to change their businesses despite the current circumstances, visit mommyincome.com slash workshop to learn more about when and how you can attend the next workshop. I really can't wait to get to know you and work with you. I'm like an elephant. I don't forget, especially people. I am so hardwired to connect with people. I remember the stories. I remember the names, the names of people's kids, their circumstances, what they're doing, what they're going through. I want to do the same for you. Why? Because I actually care about your success. If you're feeling lonely and isolated and cut off from the world because nobody understands your business struggles, this is where you can come and belong. I would love to see you at the next virtual workshop. It's going to be happening in March 19th and 20th and the 22nd. It's a three-day event. The first day is just about getting to know one another for a few hours. It's literally our happy hour welcome party. We're going to talk to each other. We're going to get to know each other, our businesses, what our desires are, what our struggles are, what our some of our goals are. And then we are going to get together and we are going to work on creating bundles and talking through the framework steps and working through these ideas and getting the ideas. How would you like five perspectives for the price of one? working in a group with four or five or six other people plus a moderator who's been there and done that to help you see how the lights can go on when you have so much other people contributing to the ideas. This is priceless stuff, guys. Stuff that lasts and lasts. I can't wait to get to know you and be able to work with you in one of these workshops. If you have any questions, please email admin at mommyincome.com with any of your questions. If you want to sign up for a virtual workshop to get more connected, I want you to go to mommyincome.com slash workshop. Take a look at whether this is going to be right for you or not. I would love to have you join me. And I want to thank you for listening. I know you could be anywhere else doing any other thing, listening to any other person. I don't take that for granted. I appreciate your listening and your focusing on that because this is not easy stuff, guys. It's not easy to admit that we're feeling lonely or isolated. It's not easy to admit that business is hard, like really hard. So for you to be able to embrace and acknowledge that and maybe just think about some of the things that you've gone through in the last 12 months and be able to now, I'm not even asking you to let go of it. I'm asking you to just process it and acknowledge some of these things so that maybe you can move to a better place. But if you're really longing for that connection and that understanding and that belonging, this is the place for you. I will see you same time, same place next week on the Amazon Files.